diving right into AL amyloidosis. Now, AL amyloidosis is historically called type 1 amyloidosis. And as we discussed before, it involves a type of protein called immunoglobulin light chains. Doctors also call it immunoglobulin light chain amyloidosis. Now, the A is for amyloidosis and L is for light chain. So it's kind of easy to remember. AL amyloidosis is because of light chains. Normal light chains are used to make antibodies, which help the body fight infections. In AL amyloidosis, the cells in the bone marrow, which is a tissue inside your bones that make the blood cells, they make a lot of abnormal light chains. These abnormal light chains can then build up in the kidneys, the heart, the liver, the GI tract, nerves, and other organs. The AL amyloid fibrils, they have a propensity or a tendency to accumulate in specific organs, which are mentioned before. And in particular, light chains derived from certain genes show a propensity to target specific organs. For example, the light chain lambda with the mutation IGLV144 preferentially targets the heart, whereas the light chain lambda from the IGLV657 preferentially targets the kidney, and light chain kappa from IGKV33 targets the liver. AL amyloidosis can occasionally be also associated with other plasma cell disorders, such as multiple myeloma, which is a cancer of the white blood cells called plasma cells, which we discussed before, or it can also be a part of Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia, which is a problem with another type of white blood cell in the marrow called B cells. So how exactly do we diagnose AL amyloidosis, right? The signs and symptoms of AL amyloidosis, unfortunately, are very insidious. They start <clears throat> they, patients initially, when they start exhibiting signs and symptoms of amyloidosis, it's very low burden of symptoms, which gradually then evolve with time. And these symptoms are often very similar to symptoms that people accumulate as they age, which results in a much, much later stage and age in which amyloidosis is initially diagnosed. So I've listed some of the common, and as you can see on the image, these are some of the common organ systems in the body that are affected. For around the vast majority of patients, close to 70%, the kidney is affected. And one of the first signs that there may be some abnormality going on is actually when your primary care provider might pick up what we call nephrotic range proteinuria, meaning there's an excessive amount of protein that is being lost in the urine. And that's kind of like the first indication that there could be something wrong. A worsening of kidney function or renal failure and peripheral edema or swelling because of the renal failure are all indications that there's something wrong with the kidney and often we may or may not need a kidney biopsy for it. The other symptom always which patients have is because 60% of patients have involvement of the heart. As discussed before, the lambda light chains typically like to go to the heart. So Patients can manifest with symptoms of restrictive cardiomyopathy or heart failure, which includes excessive fatigue, swelling in the feet, ankles, legs, or belly, shortness of breath, hypotension, syncope, which is fainting, etc. Almost a quarter of patients also have involvement of the nerves, which is very, very disturbing for patients. And these include a constant tingling or numbness of your hands and feet or carpal tunnel syndrome, both of which are part of what we call peripheral neuropathy, or sometimes patients can end up having an unknown reason why they can't control their bladder or their bowel. And that is called as a bowel or bladder incontinence. Some patients may have orthostatic hypotension, meaning when they stand up, your blood pressure goes down, but then the heart is not able to pump enough blood because the nervous system just doesn't work that way because of involvement of amyloidosis. And that's called autonomic neuropathy. Involvement of the liver is also common in almost a fourth of patients, and initially it can be caught as elevated liver enzymes. Due to involvement of the gastrointestinal tract, whatever food you eat cannot be absorbed properly, which leading to malabsorption and weight loss. And also there can be a loss of coagulation factors resulting in bleeding. So when that happens, there's a loss of coagulation factors on the amyloid protein, Bleeding occurs, which can occur in the GI system. It can also occur on the skin. Like patients who have amyloidosis may have an easy bruisability of the skin. And that is very remarkably demonstrated in some patients who spontaneously bleed into their, into their eyelids. And this is called periorbital edema or periorbital hematoma. And in fact, it has a moniker called as raccoon eyes because of the hematoma or the blood collection around the eyes. So these are... For the vast majority of patients, the signs and symptoms with which they present.